Hello, good afternoon again. I'm uh, Tom Wampik, still from the International Training Center of the ILO, and we are going to start with already our third online knowledge share fair uh, in the UN campus, uh, taking up a subject that was already introduced on Monday. We were already talking about Web 2.0, we were already talking about social software. As you remember, the Time magazine every year it chooses his most important person of the year and until 2006 that were very historical important persons coming from Martin Luther King towards um, Einstein. Well, as you remember right, it was you who were the person of the year in 2006 if I'm not wrong. And you because you were actually contributing to the web, you were managing your own information, you were not only downloading, you were uploading, you were not only reading, you were participating in the world wide web. So this was one of these major reflections of the shift from a web 1.0 environment towards a web 2.0 uh, environment, which I explained already briefly uh, on, on Monday. Um, it's rather a shift not in technology, it's a shift in actually people using technology, communities of people, communities of practice that use technology in a much more advanced way than let's say 10 years ago. Just because it became more democratic, it became more accessible and it became less technically specialized. So rather than to say that we speak here about the technological revolution, we could summarize it even as a social revolution, rather to speak it as of an attitude than as of a technology in say. What I would like to do in this uh, session, this specific session, uh, is to explore a little bit with what kind of tools, what kind of social software tools are you using. Uh, we are overwhelmed in the last years with a number of social software tools which are here quite well visualized. Uh, we have here a web 2.0 city where you can immediately see a bunch of different tools. We have here a metro map of different software and social software applications and we have even a geographical map which explains where MySpace or the Gulf of YouTube is located. In say it just explores uh, all these kind of different technologies. Uh -huh. What are you using yourself would be my first uh, question. If I go quickly uh, to the net. I think we have been talking about the use of Twitter in the learning management forum. We have been, uh, you, you see here a real-time uh, image of how Twitter is used during the world. We have a Twitter from Ukraine, one coming from India. It's amazing how fast this technology is. Uh, we have other tools that we're using. We have social bookmarking tools where here, for example, you see the last 1,600 uh, links that I have saved, tagged and put into uh, categories. Or we are part of different social networks, uh, referring to LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever. So we see a lot of different technologies that we are using on a daily basis. Sometimes they are used in, s in formal learning, but sometimes we use them on a daily basis. We are connected with Skype, for example. And my big question uh, for this chat session would be, well, any of you uh, have deployed an LMS, a learning management system or a learning content management system, which is already a collection of different tools where you can already discuss, maybe you already have a wiki uh, in in your thing, maybe there's already the possibility to block. And I would like to ask the question, well, there are a lot of tools that have not been integrated, and in which way do you integrate these tools in your learning and training, whether it's distance, face-to-face, -face or, or blended learning? Mm -hmm. Because in a lot of uh, papers and research on technology-enhanced learning, there's a concept of the personal learning environment that you as an individual choose the tools that actually fit for your own professional purposes. Mm -hmm. You Twitter to actually update your project work where you are. You actually social bookmark with a group of experts in a specific team of expertise. <laughs> in how far are they integrated in your own learning platforms? In how far are they separate? In how far can we speak of, of, of a model? So that would be my question. To illustrate the hype of the future VLE that could be exactly a kind of a personal learning environment where all these different 
off-the-shelf tools, mostly social software tools, are aggregated and syndicated in one specific model and which stimulate actually the personal uh, learning environment where the VLE, the virtual learning environment, is completely adapted to the needs of the personal environment. How could we manage this in an institutional scale? How would this be a workable model? I think there are a lot of problems that we will uh, encounter. Problems that we already talked about in the first day, about tensions between formal uh, use and informal use, the individual versus the group, the, the, the copyright uh, issues, the issues of control, the issues of ownership, the private versus public, the bottom-up versus the top-down uh, problems, the open versus the closed. These are already tensions that were in the in our first session on Monday, what I would like to focus a bit more on uh, are on the opportunities that these new tools uh, give to us, and I would like to see some good cases, some best practices the of social software integrated in, in blended learning programs or training programs in general. So this would be my message for today, uh, already a little bit more contextualized, and let's try to gather in one hour and a half as much as input as possible from, from your side. Thank you.